Section 11.2 is also looking at some geometry, looking at the geometry of ellipses. So these are ovals, like stretched circles. So I have a couple of just generic examples here. So we've got this guy. So I would call that one a horizontal ellipse because that guy, it's longer axis is the X axis. Okay, and then this guy here, it's longer axis is the Y axis. I would call that a vertical ellipse. Okay, and so what I did is I wrote, this is like the generic equation for an ellipse. And I can actually tell which type of ellipse I have, as in if I have a horizontal or a vertical ellipse, and that's determined by whether I have the bigger number under the X or the Y. So let's look at the example and then we can see kind of how that works. So notice that I have my X squared plus my Y squared and I have different numbers under X and Y. So if I had the same numbers, under x and y. Like, look what would happen. Then I could just multiply this whole thing by 16, and I'd actually have this equation. You should recognize this equation. That's just the equation of a circle centered at the origin. So you can see the difference equation-wise comparing an ellipse with a circle. So for a circle, I'd have to have the same numbers under the x squared and y squared or the same coefficients versus for an ellipse, you can see I have different numbers. So you could think of those as different stretch factors on the x-axis versus the y-axis, okay? So this was kind of just a side note. So what I could do is I could say, okay, so if I want to find or if I want to say graph this ellipse, ultimately, let me start by finding, say, the x and y intercepts. So find x intercepts, set y to zero. Might be too light. So then I have x squared over 16 plus zero equals one. So x squared equals 16, so plus and minus four. So you can kind of see the pattern if you notice, you can actually read these off by looking at the number underneath the x squared. So what about the y-intercepts? So if I set x to 0, I'm just left with the y term. So again, I could have read these off, couldn't I? So these would be 0 plus minus 5. Okay, so then let me set up the grid here. Okay, so... Let me see, my intercepts are the fours. And the fives. Okay, then I have to try to draw this. So this guy, this ellipse is not too stretched. Looks almost circular. Okay, so let's see what we what we need to fill in. So the intercepts we've done. So the question says the vertices. So we would list the intercepts on the longer axis. So I would say the vertices, the longer axis is the y-axis. So I would say the vertices are zero plus minus five. Let's see, the major axis is the y-axis. Its length is five plus five, so 10. The minor axis is the x-axis, its length is 8. Okay, 
and then I just need to find the focus points and the eccentricity. So if you look back up here at these pictures, I have these focus points. Okay, now we're not going to go, I don't want to go into too much detail in this section about, about the focus points for an ellipse. If you looked at these in high school, or if you're interested, you can look at the YouTube video. It kind of shows you how you can trace out an ellipse using like a string and the focus points. So it's kind of cool, but it's less interesting for calculus. So for this class, I kind of just want to get the focus points. I don't want to go into much more detail than that. I just want to say, okay, the focus points are going to be on the ellipse on the major axis. So I mean here somewhere, here somewhere, inside the ellipse on the major axis. So actually we have an equation where to put it, I guess, here. So hmm. how do I want to say this? Actually, I'm going to put this down below. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say, so the focus points, to get the focus points, I'm going to use the equation f squared equals, now I have to look at the numbers underneath the x squared and the y squared. So if you're thinking of this as being like x squared over m squared plus y squared over n squared equals 1 say, I would set this up. Uh, n squared minus m squared. So the only thing you have to remember, like I don't want to go into too much as far as like, <coughs> well, which one's m squared, which one's n squared, which letter do you use where? It doesn't really matter. When I go to find these focus points, only thing that matters is that I have the bigger number minus the smaller number because otherwise I wouldn't be able to take the square root. So when you set up the equation for the focus points, you just have to remember that when you look at the equation here, you have to use the bigger number minus the smaller number. So in this case, our equation would look like 25 minus 16. So I get plus or minus three. Now these have to be on the major axis. Okay, so when I list my foci, those are on the y axis because the y-axis was the major axis. Okay, so there are the focus points. So these guys, that's one of the vertices. This is one of the focus points, the foci. What else? The only thing that's left to look at is the eccentricity. So the eccentricity is a measure, let's say measures, how stretched the ellipse is. Okay. Okay, I need some more room, I think. Well, maybe not. So for the eccentricity, let me use the red one. So if you think about the eccentricity, I'm thinking about measuring how stretched the ellipse is. One way I could measure that is by looking at how close the focus point is to the end point, to the vertex point. So in general, to find the end point, I take the focus point and divide it by the vertex point. Okay, now I mean, I would choose the positives. I guess you could also choose the negatives, but then you would have to find the magnitude. Okay, so because the focus point is smaller than the vertex point, this eccentricity is always between zero and one. Okay, now the closer it is to zero, the more circular my shape is and the closer it is to one the more stretched my shape is so let me look at this specific example and so the eccentricity is three over five okay so that would be what point six 
And so I think I have all the information about this ellipse. Okay, here's another one. So, how do I know this is an ellipse? I have x squared plus y squared, then I have different coefficients on x squared and y squared. Okay, so I'm dealing with an ellipse. This one's a little different though because I don't have that standard one on the right side. Okay, so I would start by, I think I would start by dividing by 16. looks pretty easy then. So actually I can tell you a bunch of things already. Let me set up the grid. I can tell you the intercepts. So look, the x-intercepts would be plus minus 4. Look at the number underneath the x squared. The y-intercepts would be plus minus 2s. Put those on the graph. already have a pretty decent graph so what else do I want let me find those focus points actually let me list so remember the vertices are on the longer axis those would be the plus minus fours so the length of the major axis then would be the x-axis would have length eight the minor axis would have length four two plus two Okay, now let me look at the focus point. So f squared is, so I just have to look at these numbers. I just use the bigger one there minus the smaller one. So square root of 12, so that's 2 root 3. Okay, so the focus points, they have to go on the major axis, that'd be the x-axis. Okay, and then let me look for the eccentricity. Okay, so I would do the focus point. So 2 root 3 divided by 4. That'd be root 3 over 2. So what is that? 1.7 divided by 2-ish. So what is that, Point a half, point eight five ish So the eccentricity is about 0.85. So this guy's a little bit more stretched versus this guy's eccentricity up here was 0.6, it was more circular. Um, was I gonna say anything else? Um, I guess we could put the focus points on the graph. So 2 times 1.7, these are about 3.4-ish. They're here. Okay, find an equation of an ellipse with the given information.
Okay, let me see what I can put together. So, vertices plus, so I know I'm dealing with an ellipse. So let's see, x squared over something, y squared over something equals one. Okay, the vertices plus my, so the vertices are on the x-axis, so I'd have four squared, right? Be 16. I just have to figure out what this number is. So I have x squared over 16 plus y squared over something equals one. Now it says the focus points are plus minus two. So I know f squared is 16 minus n squared. I know the 16 is the bigger number because I know the vertices are on the x-axis. And then, so we, what do I, I know the focus, right? The focus points are at the twos. So uh, that's, that's similar to the last, oh, I guess I just need n squared though, because I don't, um, don't have to graph it. So n squared is 12. So there's the equation of the ellipse with the given vertices and focus points. Okay, find the equation of the ellipse again. The length of the minor axis is 12, but I know the focus points are on the y-axis. Okay, interesting. So just thinking really roughly here. If the focus points are on the y-axis, that means my longer axis is the y-axis. The length of the minor axis is 12. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I mean, have some sort of ellipse like that, okay? Okay, but what's interesting is that if I know the length of the minor axis is 12, I know those guys each have length of six. So I actually know the endpoints. So the minor axis, then these would, these, this would be six squared. Then I just have to find n again. So x squared over 36 plus y squared over n squared is 1. And so f squared, okay, be careful. Let's see. The focus points are on the y-axis. So this is actually the bigger number. Okay, the focus points are the plus minus 8. So n squared is 100. So my equation. Okay. I don't know. Should I check it? So if you went to find the focus points, you do 100 minus 36 is 64. So those would be plus minus eights. The x-intercepts would be plus minus sixes. The y-intercepts plus minus tens. And the length of the minor axis, six plus six, would be 12. That all works out. And that's